Introducing Secrets of Birthdays. Bow chicka bow wow. Are you ready to find love? Bow chicka bow wow. Your secrets are coming out. Bow chicka bow wow. All those sexy secrets are available at secretsofbirthdays.com. Bow chicka bow wow, baby. So Welcome to Soul Horoscopes Orbits Edition. From my webcam to yours, I'm Christopher Ray Manwateki, your soul biographer, here to help you put your astrology and orbit stories together into the life on Earth story known as you, or what I call now the universe. It's so great to be back. I've been off the air for four months doing my own personal spiritual sabbatical, but I am back, and I do have a couple announcements before we dive into the new horoscopes, which I'm excited to show you. First of all, if you don't know, GA Tech Service now includes free email. So if you sign up for us to watch over you and watch over you astrologically, this is me writing text messages every night. They now include a backup email in case you're out of range or don't get your text message service. And you can actually start the program for just one penny for the first week. So come on down if you haven't. We're now available worldwide. And if you don't know, you can come hang out with me live on Mondays at 12 p.m. Pacific in our guided hangouts. We have guided hangouts on Soul Garden really all week long, but mine is 12 on Monday. So I hope to see you. If you have Google+, Plus, you can come and hop on webcam and actually chat with me. And if you don't know, the 2013 Act 1 videos are available for immediate download at soulmart.me. And I have produced these in the exact style as a horoscope, so uh, you can learn all about it at soulmart.me. Well, it has been nearly four months since I appeared as DJ Dewey, or at least my twin appeared as DJ Dewey, and since then I have been going through my own personal spiritual breakthroughs and studying astrology and at the same time investing uh, in the new horoscopes. And this is my new approach uh, to 2013 and even the new age. It was a powerful shift for me. First of all, let me say happy birthday to Soul Garden. We are seven years old this year. I've been doing horoscopes now for about seven years, although 2012 was a little sketchy, I have to say with all the transition, but we are a powerful garden. We are full of volunteers, amazing spirits, living in our hearts, remarkable souls wanting to live our brightest. So if that's you, you're always welcome to come on down and join us. We're really just here to cheer you up and feel good. So we are about to embark on a very fun journey. I have reinvented the horoscopes. Now, a couple little pointers. First of all, every horoscope has the same open and has the same closing. That's a way to save time for me and get things right. So uh, make sure you click on the right horoscope. Also, the horoscopes are based on your sun sign and rising sign. I've really tied rising signs in more than ever. So if you know your rising sign, you can watch both of the horoscopes and you'll see that I've divided it into really clear visual sections so you can quickly jump around on YouTube or wherever you happen to be watching the horoscope. Lastly, they're all in high definition so you can go full screen on these babies and you can hit pause. There's a lot of information in each of the uh, titles and that's so that you can hit pause and learn if you want uh, or if not, just keep playing and don't pay attention to it. So without further ado, let's take my new GA Ascension Elevator and hop up to the clouds. Folks, this is your captain speaking. We realize you have a choice in the astrologers you choose to fly with, and we'd just like to thank you for flying with Christopher Watecki. And here we are cruising at 33,000 feet, which I like to call Cloud 9, up in the clouds. And for future reference, when you go back to watch your horoscope later in the week, because this is a seven-day mood forecast, I always go over the seven days in the clouds. You can just find it on YouTube to where there's pretty clouds, and we can go from there. And we have Mr. Happy's along with us, too. Mr. Happy's been with me since the beginning in the zodiac weather. Uh, and let's begin with what we're working on. Now, we're in Chapter 2 of Sun in Aquarius for Capricorns and Capricorn Risings. That is your ability to manifest. That is your ability to uh, manage your soul capital. At the beginning of that, that's values and esteem and soul capital. Now in Chapter 2, it is production. Your ability to uh, basically be a builder, to create an income, to draw on law of attraction, abundance. And then later in the week when we light cast, it'll be manifestation and actual abundance itself. So that's cool there, is it not? 
At the beginning here, you can see the timeline at the bottom is lined up with the Mr. Happy. So on Sunday, Venus ruled the day, so it was restoring confidence in yourself for Capricorns and Capricorn Risings. Uh, Monday was a spiritual day connecting to spirituality, but the moon went into Sagittarius. Notice you get cloudy. That's because you go underground, and emotions go a bit underground too. Maybe testing your faith on Monday. On uh, Tuesday, Saturn rolls the day, so you're feeling stronger, but emotions are still on the ground testing face. So you're kind of blah and detached, uh, I think. On Thursday, Mars rolls the day, so it's time to take action. So on Tuesday, you're deciding what you're worth. On Wednesday, you're taking action. That might be actually asking for a raise or something like that, literal, or putting a production in motion. The moon moves into Capricorn as of Wednesday, so you're feeling sunny and cool rather good, I do believe. Then on Thursday, you are light casting or manifesting, I should say, holding space. This is just I love and I trust that it will all happen. The moon's in your sign, so you're feeling, I think, pretty groovy about that regardless. Then the moon rules the day on Friday, and we move into Master Shui. So this is where you want to get passionate, and the moon catches up into a Aquarius, you can get uh, passionate about uh, here we come my, my lines again passionate about uh, what you are worth uh, and that is of course in time for love fest day where you're giving and receiving so you're feeling it I think really feeling your worth on love fest day it's the best day of the month to love people and tell people that you love them then finally we have a uh, light cast day finally on Sunday and that's a Uranus rule day so that's going to be an emotional breakthrough for caps and Capricorn risings about what you're really worth and you'll be light casting I have a little video at the end of the horoscopes that will teach you how to light cast so now let's move to the next portion where I talk about each of the 12 states of awareness and where you are in 12 stories in your life or 12 orbits in your life. And this, of course, takes place in the fun, groovy parts of outer space. And here we are up in the 12 states of awareness in outer space, and we can see uh, uh, all of them unified here. I call this omni-awareness when uh, we can unify our awareness or we can call that enlightenment for instance. And of course you are uh, working on this month production and manifestation, right? All right, so our first one is going to be uh, with st uh, uh, step zero, which is I protect. Now Pluto is the master of protection and Pluto is working on you protecting ego, actions, and identity. Pluto's been working on you since 2009. Finally, as we start the year, we're in step 10, which means when it comes to where your ego is, caps and cap risings want to love and trust what they have. And just love and trust what you have until February 24th. Basically, you can see the date there uh, at the bottom of the graphic, February 24th. So just love and trust your ego. And for those who have Capricorn risings, love and trust where your ego ego is so far as well. Um, there's nothing to do uh, for a while. Um, life will change forever though. You can see the rising sign line. For those of the Capricorn rising, your life is probably going to change forever uh, starting this particular step, step 10. Now let's look at where we're loving. Where we're loving is always like the cloud version, so you are manifesting soul capital. And here I actually, in this graphic, laid out in the actual steps for you. The way you read this here on Sunday is, that is uh, step one conjunct step five. Step one is I love, step five is I think, and that equals balance, six. So you add this just like mathematics, but these are like steps in astrology. And that's what consciousness is, is just steps on top of steps of, uh, that we are taking, and we're putting forward one or the other. So basically, you can look at this, you can pause the video, and you can read this, if you want to get down to the actual steps, you get stuck in something. I will always point out in this what I think is most valid, and that this week is Lycast Day, that it's step two conjunct two, which means I feel myself, I feel my passion, I feel where I belong in the world. That is an innovation that comes to a four. Two conjunct two equals four. Step four is breakthrough. So you're really feeling what you are worth, and you are allowing yourself to feel connected to the uh, universe on Lycast Day about what you're worth. And that's, I think, the most important step in uh, step one. Let's look at step two. Now, step two uh, is I feel, how we feel and where we feel. I keep goofing up that graphic. Uh, the moon is in Scorpio at the beginning of the week on Sunday. So that means emotions are social. Then they go underground. You can see cloudy Monday and Tuesday in Sagittarius. So you're being emotionally triggered in the subconscious. Then they go into your sign, Capricorn, on Wednesday and Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for light cast day. Emotions are focused on, uh, of course, your value and where you go. Let's look at where you are expanding your consciousness. 
Step three is I believe. So when it comes to beliefs, you are believing in the moment. That's what you're focusing on is manifesting the six senses. You can see here and then uh, performance, but we're in step six. So giving and receiving in the moment, that is all you have to focus on when it comes to your health right now. And that's all you have to focus on when it comes to your lifestyle is giving and receiving the moment until February 20th, 2013. Step four is Uranus, uh, Uranus, which is I belong. And Uranus is an Aries. So what that means is uh, Uranus is is uh, focusing uh, for Capricorns on I feel. All right, you can see here your emotions, innovating your connection to your own emotions. This is tied to some of the health stuff Capricorns have been working on, has to do with your own emotional awareness. So when it comes to emotions, we are in chapter one, step five. We're in the emotion, the red chakra part there on the left, uh, under reflection, and that means when it comes to how you feel, uh, how you connect to your emotions in the moment, you want to keep your mind focused on thinking good or gooder, and you want to. Uh, basically focus on the moment being good or gooder and you have to use your mind step five to get there uh, then we get to you can see on Sunday you'll get to step six with how you feel in the moment which is I belong giving and receiving in the moment so you'll really feel like you're connected in the moment it won't just be mental that will be of on as of light cast day which is groovy let's look at our thoughts thoughts are in two parts they start in manifestation and then shift uh, to thinking itself and so uh, Capricorns Capricorn risings are gonna go through a really deep examination of how they think really implementing self-compassionate thoughts into your moment-to-moment -moment thinking in the beginning of the week mercury is in aquarius and you are uh, basically committing uh, step two conjunct six so you feeling what i feel and giving and receiving equals a decision so when you feel it and you can see it's going to work you decide so you're making a year commitment to what you're worth intellectually but then on tuesday mercury goes offline then on uh, wednesday thursday mercury is in pisces so you are thinking about thinking okay and your thoughts are very psychic as um, Mercury conjuncts Neptune there on Wednesday, Thursday, and then conjuncts Mars, making it very aggressive. There'll be very aggressive thoughts for Capricorns, Capricorn Risings. Keep your mouth shut, I would think, until it gets past this next thing. But by uh, Sunday, like cast day, you are already deciding about what thoughts you want to get rid of. So basically what you're examining this week with thoughts is what thoughts don't serve you anymore. And that's, I think. Now, giving and receiving is Venus. That's where we actually see results in the world. And that is way back in the very beginning of Soul Capital. So you are just now starting to feel, step two on Sunday, feel the confidence of the transit of what you've been uh, light casting. Then on Tuesday, there might be a little breakdown, so there might be a little freak out on the uh, as far as your money is concerned on Tuesday. Then by Thursday, you're, you're healed it again. So if you have a money issue, it'll heal by Thursday. <laughs> step eight, you are deciding where you want to receive. This is you collecting for the soul work here. So this is receiving step eight, and you're committing to maybe a project or committing to a future income. Uh, then Saturday, uh, you, it's Love Fest Day. The moon conjuncts Venus, this place. So this is where you are feeling. And you want to act on uh, what you believe is what you love and feel is unique about your values what is unique about your self-confidence what is unique about your ability to make money act on what you feel love and feel is unique and then on like cast day it is a step 10 you're manifesting so you're loving and trusting where you are so far with uh, soul capital step seven neptune uh beautiful neptune is focused in pisces which is your thoughts so caps and cap risings are starting to become very psychic in their thoughts the universe is sending a lot of psychic messengers little birds in your head not just you chirping in there now there are some birdies uh, basically you're just starting to feel the psychic thoughts coming in we're in step two and uh, the last time we were in step two with Neptune and Pisces was May 9th 1848 I looked that up my birthday in 1848 so I wonder if I was getting more psychic the whole planet is getting more psychic with Neptune and Pisces and you are feeling this in your thoughts and you are this whole week in step two just feeling the thoughts now your home planet Saturn step eight uh, in Scorpio Cutting away since Halloween uh, your old social connections, old friends, old titles, old entitlements, old social circles, old belongings. So you're cutting away your old I belongs, your old I belong attachments to society and groups. Now as we start off the year, you're in step 11, which means that you're in gratitude for what you've learned and you want to have gratitude feeling forward. And we're in step 11 gratitude. In fact, we're going to be in gratitude for some time. Saturn goes retrograde. I talk about that in the Act 1 video. If you haven't got it already, it's just like this, but three months across the bottom. So uh, we are, you want to be in gratitude about your social status so far, and that's where we're going to uh, hold space this week. Step 9 action 
Mars has moved into Pisces this whole week, which is your thinking. So action is very aggressive in the mind and it burns through chapter one here in this whole week. So your mind is very aggressive. This is why I say hold your tongue. Mars is adding pepper to uh, Mercury. There might be a uh, particular Thursday step four breakdown about belonging. So you might flip out and break down about belonging on step four there on Thursday. Caution there. You're really, really uh, feeling psychic. Uh, Mars is uh, uh, conjuncting Neptune really all week long as you can see it's conjuncting Mercury most of the week and it squares Jupiter all week so it squares uh, some of that lifestyle stuff what does this mean Christopher well it means that you know uh, you're being pushed to be more compassionate in your own thinking about yourself and Mars is going to make it a little bit more uh, aggressive in your mind which is to get you out of your own thinking not to get you angry at other people or things like that that's how I interpret it and the square means that fears may come up about whether or not this is gonna work and you want to say yes it is gonna work I'm moving forward now manifestation which is always the opposite of what we're like casting what you are manifesting right now is new security in the world by uh, securing what you are worth you are feeling more secure in the world so uh, your boundaries your limits all these things that you tried to set out six months ago they're now coming into fruition you're now starting to feel more secure, hopefully, and have more trust. Your privacy is more secure. And by the end of this transit, you will have manifested some changes in your life that you set out six months ago to do. So you should be uh, proud of yourself with that. Now, IB, uh, the final state where we be, when the universe says to be in the mind, so Chiron is in the mind, so Capricorn's focus is in the mind right now. Be in your thoughts, be in your thinking, but uh, be spiritual in your thoughts. See that? Step seven. Be spiritual Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. On um, Wednesday, you want to be decisive about your healing spirit. So that decisiveness is what you are no longer thinking and your new positive attitude. Self-compassion, I think, is it. And for those who have Capricorn Risings, this could be a monumental moment in your personal thinking, in your personal uh, kindness, in your thoughts. Monumental. All right, so the final portion of our horoscope will be a little uh, summary of Light Cast Day. Every 28 days, the moon will cycle from full moon to new moon, where the moon becomes trapped, or for one moment, between the sun and the earth, which is known as the new moon, or what we call Light Cast Day. Light Cast Day is the most powerful day of the month to unite your light, because the sun, I love, and the moon, I feel, come together, and those are steps one and two of manifestation or light casting. So on light cast day, we always recommend to fill your heart with love, to feel the love for what it is that you want to draw into your life, and to cast your love out into the universe. Now the attitude of receiving is gratitude. So as you are casting out saying, I love this, I want this in my life, you are grateful. I love myself, I love you. That is the gratitude attitude. Hold that gratitude with love in your heart and try to visualize specifically what it is you want to draw into your life. Basically, unlike cast day, you want to fill your heart with love and you want to be what it is that you want to come. And this simple ritual alone will set your mind and your heart and your intentions on the same omni-awareness path. But it has been my experience literally that if you do this ritual during light cast, particularly during the powerful hours of the new moon, things do come faster. There's just something about it with the universe. This is going to conclude this week's horoscope, but before you go, I do want to pay a little attention and give some gratitude to some special souls who have been there for us, especially during the spiritual sabbatical I went on here in the last four months. And I literally want to thank these people personally by name, if you don't mind. Mary Slowick, great help, Kat Zenos, Corey Williams, Clarissa Richardson, James Roundy, Novus Herring, Susan Lear, Willinghorse, Anita Peralt, Carrie Wolf, Tina MacArthur, and John C. Morley for giving me this necklace. <laughs> That's my first way of giving gratitude. And actually, all those people listed uh, uh, donated money directly to Soul Garden, especially during the hard times and the holidays. And I just want to say thank you so much for your kind donations. We actually purchased some software that helped contribute to this new high definition with the money you gave us. And uh, of course, it helps us get along. So it is uh, with great gratitude gratitude that I say thank you for uh, your help and thank everyone who made purchases over this time. If you've booked a, uh, a reading with me, we are in pursuit with that. If you've ordered a Lightcast report card, we're working on that too. We thank you so much uh, for your investment. It is a great appreciation to be on the air and serve humankind. So without further ado, I will say farewell for now and I will see you back on the air next Sunday. Until then, happy Lightcast Day and live love be. Oh,